I was a liar, a cheater. I was a giant man whore in my past. I tried to see multiple women at the same time. A terrible friend, absolutely. But do I think I'm any of those things anymore? No, I really don't. Whatever I was, I'm not that person anymore. That said, I am still human. Uh, those aren't the last mistakes I'll ever make. And if there's anything I ever do that's shitty, that irks you, or I make you uncomfortable, or you think that I step over the line, communicate that with me. But I would still like to be told when something I do crosses a boundary, whether that be something I say in a video or something that is proven to be true about me as a person. Ask and you shall receive, Destry. Hi guys, for those of you who don't know, my name is Shannon Taylor. I'm a creator and a musician. I've been on this platform for a really long time and something that I'm known for outside of my creative work is the fact that I stand up to bad people on this platform a lot. And unfortunately, I'm here today making another video talking about another bad person on this platform that I personally was involved with for a good amount of time, unfortunately. Obviously, we're talking about the Destry Smith situation here today, and I just want to preface this entire video by saying for numerous reasons, I'm not feeling very good today. Uh, I spent all day putting this timeline together. It's a very convoluted one. It's really emotionally draining. I'm very tired, but I'm here doing my best to make this video to A, bring awareness to this situation that frankly has not gained enough traction that I think Destry is going to try to just sweep under the rug if I don't make this video. And B, because there are so many women, not, not just women, but girls, underage girls as well, just female people involved in this story with so many overlapping timelines and screenshots, so much cheating, so much lying, so much manipulation. We, as a group, all, all these girls and I have tried to line up the timeline of the cheating and all of our overlapping relationships and talking with Estri and everything. And <laughs> via text, DMs and everything, it's just too hard. There's too many of us. There's too many screenshots. And I figured the best way for me to put my story out there is in my own words, in video format, with my screenshots. So not only can everyone on this platform be aware, but some of these girls who were affected can watch this and possibly line up their timelines with mine and find a little bit of closure. I kind of went into that assuming you guys know the situation because if you follow me, this is something I've been talking about recently a lot just because it has been you know, a pretty pertinent situation on the internet and obviously in my own real life. But if you don't know the situation, essentially a, a big YouTuber, big OG emo haired YouTuber in his 30s or 30 years old now has not only been cheating on his numerous girlfriends with each other and with me, um, but he has also supposedly been doing this with young girls. I've seen as young as 14, 15, which is obviously illegal. I, I'm, I'm gonna say that's an accusation that I've heard elsewhere, but there's so much proof, I just, you can't not ignore it like Destry has done so far. You've gotta look into it. But today, um, I am not going to specifically be talking about that portion, although that is the important part, like that is the part that we want addressed, Destry. That is the reason why all of your of-age girlfriends are so distraught with the situation is because we found out that not only were you cheating on all of them with people like me and, you know, leading me on and everything, but you were doing this with children, allegedly. And you have not addressed that. That's the part that we want to address, but unfortunately, the proof that I have is about you Destry Smith mistreating adult women in your life. And the fact that you specifically chose the words that you have done this in the past, five, 12 years ago in the past, but you are so distant from that person now, it was almost like an antagonistic threat or like challenge to me to make this video. I don't know who you think I am or what you think I stand for, but we've talked every day for six months, so I thought you would have a little bit of a grasp of understanding that I wasn't just gonna let this slide, especially when you go so far as to essentially challenge me and say that this didn't happen. All right, <laughs> before I work myself up, let's actually get into the screenshots. Let's actually get into the proof. And 
Granted, I am not a proponent of sharing personal messages. I don't want to share my own personal messages particularly either. But if he's going to go so far as to not only gaslight me in our own relationship via text, but then also completely act like we never even had any sort of relationship online and just literally not acknowledge that that's part of the situation, <laughs> I I've got to. Like, this is all I have is our screenshots. So from here on out, I I'm including as little as I can but everything poignant to the situation that proves he was talking to slash dating multiple women at once, I'm, I'm going to use that. So from here on out, I'm gonna be looking down at my phone and reading you these screenshots. Granted, I'm not gonna read them verbatim because there's just so much. I've already condensed it down, but if I read these verbatim, it's gonna take forever. So these will be on the screen. If you wanna pause, read them, you're more than welcome to do so. And Destry, if you feel like I manipulated these, which I haven't, <laughs> put all our texts out there. I don't care. You're the weirdo, not me. There's nothing in here that I'm worried about. So with that being said, let's start at the very beginning of this situation. Why did Destri and I start talking? We started talking in DMs, Instagram DMs, in about August, August, September, and we initially were discussing working on a song together. He's a musician, I'm a musician. I was going to sing on one of his songs that he's written. Excuse me, I just had Popeyes. <laughs> so we started talking and we became actual friends. For those of you who don't know, I am a huge fan, or I was, obviously. I was a huge fan of Destry uh, growing up. Like, this isn't just an out of nowhere, oh, we kind of connected as, you know, creators thing. I mean, yes, that is what happened. We totally connected as creators after I became a creator, but I've been following this dude forever. So I have no vested interest in seeing him fall, like he said in his apology video. In fact, I had the opposite. I, I really, really liked him. I really appreciated his work. In retrospect, it's garbage, but you know what I mean? I didn't want to see him fall. I wanted to be his friend and potentially more than that. So we talk about doing this song and eventually we've been talking so much I give him my phone number because it's just easier. So I give him my phone number and we're just gonna start there. All right, so the first text I ever get from Destry, and we've been talking in DMs, but the first text I get from Destry is on November 2nd, and he essentially says, hi, it's Destry, thanks for giving me your number. Thought I'd text you so you have it. We make some small talk about the weather or whatever, and um, I'm, I'm cutting out like chunks of small talk that have no relevancy, but essentially we got talking about our personal life, and within two texts, he uh, mentions the fact that I'm single. Also, had no idea you were single. Oh really, Destry, did you not? Is that not why you probably messaged me? And um, I said, oh for sure, there's a ton I'm looking forward to, referencing the fact that he, the future's scary, but there's things to look forward to. I said, I, yeah, I was in a pretty long relationship, but I've been single for a good few months now. What about you? And I'm including this because he tells me, I was single from 2018 till about July. I'm in a relationship now, but it's rocky. I'm hoping for the best. So right off the bat, he's asking you about if I'm single, if I'm taken, whatever, and he tells me that his relationship was just not great. This is what we talk about a lot, is our, my, the fact that I've recently been broken up with and that he's in a quote-unquote terrible relationship, rocky relationship. Um, cutting out more small talk, essentially. I wanted to include this part because he is the first person to flirt with me. <laughs> I just want to put that out there, and I didn't even realize this until reading back, like, because... You know, I did like him. I, I liked him. I had I had little feels. Um, but I was holding back because he told me he was in a relationship. But he goes, we're talking about seen hair at this point. I say, you have the most legendary seen hair, maybe tied with Johnny. Side note, Johnny Gilbert's the only good emo, so hashtag Stan Johnny Gilbert. Um, <laughs> but he says, I always enjoy your hair no matter what, so you could say that I'm a simp. I'm like, oh, okay, whatever, thanks. Um, you're sweet though, thank you. I didn't even say that I, I'm a simp of him. I just said you're sweet though, thank you. We keep talking and subject has pretty much changed, but we're still talking about hair. And he goes, but yeah, add me to your list of simps, I guess. And I was like, okay. So I keep talking to him. I said, yeah, definitely over my scene or definitely over my hair now. I might just leave it now and chop it off, dye it silver, blah, blah, blah. And then I say, I'm definitely a Destry simp as well, ha ha. Like I said, still trying to keep things like tame because I do know he has a girlfriend. 
So we go back at this point, and, and keep in mind, I have cut these down for brevity. From this point forward, we literally talk every day for six months. Like, there's not an hour that goes by, really, that we I don't send him a text or vice versa. We've gone back to talking about this song, which is why we've started talking in the first place. I'm talking about my writing strengths, his writing strengths, blah blah blah. And here, we can see he is the first person to suggest flying me out or meeting up in general. So he says, so whenever you want to come to Oregon or meet to Florida or go somewhere random, that's neither of those places, haha. -ha. Which, you know, is fairly innocent if you don't know the grand scope of things. Like, he has a girlfriend and he's offered to fly me out. Okay, and this is important because of the later gaslighting that comes. I just want you to see that he is the one pursuing me. Just for backstory to this next text, I had gone on a few dates with this guy that I told him about who ended up and it just wasn't working out. He was pretty possessive, the other guy that I went on these dates with. And he, out of nowhere, again, we're talking about music, and he responds to his own text about flying and meeting up and says, well, definitely come up before you get taken by another possessive butthole after only a couple dates, haha. -ha. How, how is that not flirting, dude? Like, how is that not, like, crossing a line? Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna skip a week ahead because you get the point. He has asked me twice to fly me out in, like, one of our first conversations. Clearly, he's flirting with me. I feel like that's proof enough. That's all I really have to show you from that per portion. Um, I do want to include this next portion from a week later because this is literally the next time he mentions his girlfriend again who also for the record I have talked to this girl I've made sure that it's okay that I use her story and her name but the person we're talking about is Evie Evie Davis who is also a um a streamer and I think she's a youtuber I'm sorry she's a really wonderful girl either way I I one of the only good parts of this situation is that I've met her and some of these other girls. Um, but that's who he's talking about when he's talking about this rocky relationship. And, he, you know, he, he really doesn't ever bring it up. He, in fact, makes it seem very inconspicuous and, like, they're not actually dating sometimes. And this is an example of that. So he said that, you know, in this portion of our text a week later now, he says that he's optimistic today. And I say any particular reason for the optimism. He says, no real reason. Me and a lady I've been pursuing have finally talked and see eye to eye on some stuff, but it's still a super up here, uphill battle. And I said, no, you're good. I was just at work anyways. That's great to hear. I'm happy for you. But like, I, I want to include this portion because <laughs> he calls her a lady he's pursuing. Wasn't she just your girlfriend a week ago, Destry? I'm so confused. Who is she? Are you mixing them up? Is there more than just Evie? Probably. He says, yeah, I've been looking for that forever waifu now and it's hard to find. <laughs> just reading these texts back makes me want to die <laughs> inside a little bit. Um, and the next thing that happens is we have a very long voice notes, like audio voice memo exchange, which is something we do frequently. Uh, we talk about in these voice memos what we're looking for in a future partner. It's definitely very flirty and it's definitely very like, you know, he, he, he pretty much hints at the fact that this relationship is like not going to work out for him, the one with Evie, um, which is gross in, its, in and of itself. But I'm just kind of talking about my past relationship and like the things that I wish I had gotten from that relationship. Anyways, it's not, it's not a conversation you just really have between two platonic acquaintances, right? Um, and I'm gonna skip again, ahead again now. This is a big portion I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna take out about a month because that entire month is just back and forth, normal conversation. Nothing I found in there was really incriminating or anything. Um, but we're gonna skip to New Year's Day. New Year's Day, I say, I've actually finally gone out and celebrated New Year's with my best friend and I sent him a video of me and my best friend, you know, cheersing or whatever. He says, both cuties, have fun. I say cheers from afar and he goes, looking omega cute. Also, I looked at flights, they're like $300 on average. So this is his third time bringing up flights without me bringing it up. He's literally on his own time looking up flights for me to come out there and stuff without me instigating that conversation. And he say, my favorite text, and he goes, ha ha ha, why? And in this screenshot, I'm cutting it off, but you can see at the top I sent him a video. I was pretty drunk because it was New Year's. And I said, because I'm excited to meet you and, you know, like, I have somewhat of a crush on you. I think this would be, you know, a fun time or whatever. And he sends me 
some emojis and says, "Ee." the only thing I still need to figure out is my current situation still. And not because, like, I expect anything to happen with us. I just want to be transparent so no one is mad. Obviously, he's referencing Evie in this point. And up until this point, he's given me so many different, like, situations about their relationship. Like, it's over, it's back on, they're on and off, it's rocky, it's on the way out, it's good again. I pretty much, like, just really don't know what the fuck is going on with them. So I, again, have stayed relatively reserved in terms of flirting and everything. But he's trying to fly me out already. So, you know, it's very mixed signals, if I may say so myself. So I literally say, I don't want to impose in any way possible. I want you to be happy more than anything else. I'm super, super excited to meet you. You have no idea. I'm here no matter what. And he goes, I'm also here no matter what. The abridged version is, I don't think I can be with her. And it's for no other reason than I'm just not ready to trust her again. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, because you are the one who has the trust issues from all of your girlfriends. You are the one who has been cheated on, of course. No. No. No one can trust you, Destry. That's the issue here. Even the way you're talking to me, you are so fucking confusing. You know what you're doing. You know you're manipulating me to think that you, this relationship's over when it's not. So I say, I completely understand that. It's the same thing with my ex and I. If you can't trust someone, it just isn't worth your time and energy. I love him a ton and I can't imagine what he's going through, but I think there's something more for me out there and I'd like to see where this goes, meaning between Destry and I. He says, in a way, I'm terrified to even step into that to you, into that with you. I don't want to ruin this fantastic friendship we've built. And that's not me saying no, by the way. That's just me not wanting to mess up another good thing in my life. And I said, I completely respect that. I want to make clear if this is something we end up both wanting to pursue after we meet. Context clues. I want to take all the time in the fucking world to develop it. Snail pace is my pace right now, but I know for a fact I really like you and I can't wait to meet you. He says, I like you. Whoop, bop. I like you a lot too, but I'm also trying to manage my pace and stuff so I don't mess anything up with you. You're too important to mess up. These are not platonic texts, my guy. <laughs> like, they're not, okay? You don't say this to like, you're just your chill pal. You don't say this to your dude friend, you know what I'm saying? Um, so I'm gonna skip ahead to mid-January now. This is probably about two weeks later. And we were talking about food. I was literally talking about McDonald's, and for the fourth time in counting, he brings up flying me out. Hey, I forgot to say, February is probably the best time to see you, to be honest, because one, I have to film a big, big video this month and I don't want to have to split time. Two, music has been a chore for me lately, so I want to come at music when I'm fresh and wanting to. Three, my birthday's in February, so maybe you can come around then. I said yes to all of those things, that sounds great, love to celebrate with you, let me know what dates you're thinking so I can take them off of work. Alright, so at this point I'm under the impression he's actually single. Whether that's the case or not, I'm gonna go with not, but I, I really was under the impression he was actually single. This next part, this is a doozy, this is a quite the doozy, okay? We're gonna bring in a new character to the screenplay. Um, this is now who I'm about to talk about, the person Destry is so grotesquely referencing in these next few texts is the girl he's dating now. I wonder what she'd have to say about that, <laughs> about these texts that I'm about to read. Cause they're, even when I was like into him, I was like, this is odd, like this is weird. I don't know, these are weird texts. This is really where it gets weird and manipulative and gross and slimy. So he says, I'm very much inviting you, uh, referring to his birthday. The only thing I'm obvious, or the only thing is obviously I'd be inviting other friends, just three, and they're not a chaotic, or and they are a chaotic bunch, not drugs or anything like that, just getting naked and streaking kind of chaotic. And I said, haha, love that, I get along with everyone, love meeting new people, so no worries. Plus they sound great. Not really, I was just trying to be nice. <laughs> they don't sound that great, sorry, Destry. And I said, oh, and then he says, this is the doozy. I only worry about my current girlfriend uses her name because I'm assuming she wasn't quite his girlfriend yet. I only worry about her wanting to fuck you is all, lol. And I say, lol, that's a non-issue. And I, I thought it was a guy. I sent a voice message talking about how I'm only interested in him and other guys or whatever. And he goes, no, she's a girl, lol, lol. She just thinks you're hot as fuck and she's gonna want to scissor you. Okay, Destry. 
So I sent him a voice message where I'm basically like, again, I'm not interested in any, I have, I'm got a one track mind. I'm interested in one thing right now and I'm holding off till we meet. And he says, no one can, cause I said, no one can get this <laughs> bussy. <laughs> he said, no one can, snap sassy fingers, but okay, fair. Blah, 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 blah. So I, I literally say, I've only got a one track mind right now simping for one person. He goes, ha ha halo emoji and then i say this because i feel off about the conversation and i'm trying to give him an opening to be like yeah i'm seeing someone else or blah 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 so i give him this opening i say having ne never met before in real life is so hard sometimes please feel free to tell me to back off if you want i'm doing my best to gauge with or i'm doing my best to gauge how much i can flirt with you but if i'm crossing any lines please tell me i'm not trying to rush your healing or impose at all i really care about you and just want the best for you honestly and he says no no it's okay yeah i'm just not letting myself be too hopeful or excited i tend to just have no expectations like i said i've had a hard time keeping people in my life so i'm just overly cautious i wonder why that is <laughs> i wonder so i say oh that's completely okay i'm the same way no expectations are always my expectation life has humbled me into having no expectations but i can't help but still be excited by you Lord, did I not know life was gonna humble me again real hard this time. I'm very excited, don't think I'm not, is what Destry says. We're gonna move on. Actually, this is still January. This is still the middle of January. So he texts me, hiya, as he does every single day. And I say, hi cutie, how are you? He said, well, somehow I got denied on that application referring to an apartment or a house or something. So, ticket talk today, maybe? Five times, ding, 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 <laughs> we've hit the golden ticket of five times offering to fly me out without me actually responding or looking at flights or anything. So I said, well, what the hell, I'm sorry to hear that, that's frustrating, but yeah, I'd love that. And he said, I don't understand it, whatever, this part doesn't matter, we just talk about the house. A few more weeks go on, right? It is now, I think, the very end of January or early February. I should have included the timestamp. Oh, no, 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 it is... Am I, am I stupid? Okay, no, I'm not. I'm reading, I'm reading the date backwards. The date is backwards. This is now the middle, still the middle of January. And um, uh, I end up purchasing the plane ticket. I, of course, I, uh, I purchased the plane ticket. He sent me half, so... I'm out only 150 bucks, but that still sucks. Thanks for wasting my time and money, Destry. Um, so I sent him a screenshot of me buying the ticket. It's real now, I'm stoked. And he goes, me too, keyboard mashing, you have no idea. And I say, it's gonna fe feel surreal until I finally get to squeeze you. And he says, I wanna be squeezed in half. Also, we still need to make a list. So that didn't seem very important. I just wanted to prove, I just wanted to show the point in time where I actually purchased the ticket. And then also that's a very important segue into the notes, the notes app dilemma. That is a big point of contention in this situation. So he goes, I want to be squeezed in half and we still need to make a list. And I say, I'll squeeze you in half with all my tiny might. And oh yeah, I completely forgot a movie list. Yes. He goes, well, yes, but also just like a list in general. And I said, oh, things to do. And he goes, yes, yes. And I said, okay, list boy, you start us off. So he makes a list of all the places that we're going to go, all of my favorite movies, all of the places we're going to eat, uh, like just basically he lists out everything that we're going to do, all my favorite stuff, I'll include the list so you can see it, blah blah blah. At the time I thought this was super adorable, I was like this is so cute, I have a guy making lists of like our dates when I get there, what we're going to do, like dream come true, right? No, not right at all. Um, and I don't have proof of this because I only have my own note, but as time has gone on, I have discovered that Destry kept a different note in his notes app for every girl he was talking to, not to be cute, but so he could organize us and make sure he knew which places he'd taken which one of us, what things he talked to about with each one of us, our favorite things so he didn't get those confused and fuck up the timeline and let this whole thing unravel, all of his lies and cheating and manipulation. That's the real reason he has the notes, to keep all of the women and girls in his life organized, like some sort of fucking property. So the reason that I'm, I'm bringing up the list thing again, because despite it being gross that he has us organized, he uses this list to segue into another conversation about me having sex with the girl that's now his girlfriend. Let's read this one, shall we? 
So I said, it's a deal then, referring to the list of all the things we're gonna do. And he says, high on that list, keeping girl away from you so she doesn't suggest threesomes. Oh yeah, because I'm sure it would be her that would be suggesting that. And I said, lol, lol, I'll be honest, that's like the only thing I've never tried. Nothing against the idea, it's just not my thing, I don't think. I'm like a golden retriever, lol, I'll be nice and give love to everyone, but if I have my person, that's all I want. He said, yeah, there's certainly a difference in mentality with them and like attachment and stuff, but yes, I'm gonna hide you from her. And I said, difference between what, your friends and what I just said or what? Also, okay, I'll keep you, or I will stay in your pocket. He goes, no, no. Difference in mentality with threesomes. You just have to leave emotions at the door. And I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense, haha. -ha. Yeah, I think it would have to be a perfect situation for me to consider it, but I still don't think that would be my thing. And he goes, yeah, I've had two in my day. It's hot, just not needed, haha. -ha. And I said, that's probably the best way to describe about how I feel about it as well. That's probably the best way to describe how I feel about it as well. I can't talk. And so he goes, anyways, I'm clearly trying to change the subject, anyways, ha ha, she really would suggest it. That's why I'm keeping you away as much as I can. I, come on, is it really her that would suggest it, Destry? Again? And again, I say, lol, you don't have to worry. Like I say, I'm kind of only interested in one thing at the moment. I think by now I've set up a, a, a clear pattern of how he talks to women. He clearly tries to keep all of us in the dark and as confused about each other as possible. And in retrospect, I truly do think he was either already dating this girl and together they were planning on flying me there to have a threesome and these conversations was his way of easing me into the idea or she wasn't aware and again, the plan was to fly me out there and he's using me into the idea of having a threesome with him and her. Um, so, <laughs> just disgusting. And he's gonna use the girl that he's now in a relationship with as a scapegoat? Like, she's the one who wants to fuck me, not you, Destry? Okay, great. Maybe if it is true, if it really is her, then you guys are perfect for each other, assuming she's not a child. All right, sorry, my camera died. Um, if you're still with me at this point, I appreciate you because we're about to begin the beginning of the end here. And this is where it gets important and where the internet gets involved. So I give him a few weeks pass after the conversation about his now current girlfriend wanting to fuck me and have threesomes and whatever. A few more weeks go on. I have already purchased plane tickets, so I'm expecting to actually be going there in a few weeks. The trip was set for February 20th to the 24th, so this is somewhere in like early February now. And I wanted to give him one more chance, like one more conversational opening to tell me he's seeing someone else or not interested anymore before I come because I'm really not trying to be let on. So I literally say, literally say like, I, I actually didn't screenshot this, but I know what I said. I said, like, are you still interested in me? Are you still interested in me coming out? Are you seeing somebody else? And he says, oh, no. I guess it's just because more than anything, I'm trying to preserve our friendship first. Let's say I'm super flirty and shit, and then you get here and things change somehow. It's almost like I led you on, or then it's almost like I feel like I led you on, and that's the last thing I want to do in the world, is that. Okay. I said, okay, fair enough. I think this is kind of what I'm trying to figure out here, lol. And he said, yeah, because like, regardless of what happens, I imagine us being influences and around each other for years now. That's what I intend. But anything else, I'm not concerned with my, or I'm not concerning myself with too much until we meet, if that makes sense. He said, I appreciate that sentiment. I hope so too. He says, what do you feel? And I said, I guess I'm honestly a little confused on how you feel. I think now I'm a little clearer, but not entirely, because like I said, this man is master of mixed signals. And he says, do I find you attractive? Of course, inside and out. And I said, I am just excited to meet you and I like you not only for business purposes, but I genuinely like you. I find you hilarious, adorable, super sweet, interesting. I can go on. I'm not trying to rush anything or ask anything of you at all. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. He says, well, of course. Like, I think you're fiery tamale. Disgusting. <laughs> and trust me, if I was speaking my mind, I'd do a lot more than friendshipy st type stuff with you. But also, like you said, or also, like I said, I'm just hyper cautious to an annoying part. Point. Words are hard at this point in the video. 
I am, uh, I have, everything is good at this point. We go back to our normal conversation. I feel like I've given him more than enough openings to say I'm not interested. I've moved on. I'm seeing someone else. And every time he assures me, he's just being hyper cautious. And then when I get there, we'll take our relationship to the next level. Sure, that's the page I was on too. So another two weeks pass after that. And it is now, or another week passes after that. It's now February 6th. So the first week, the end of the first week of February. And he texts me, hi, I miss you. And I said, hi, I miss you, smiley face. He said, how are you? And I said, good, just chilling finally for the time being. How are you? He said, same, I cleaned all day and just tried to clear my head. Keep in mind, he had been being distant for a couple days. And that's also part of the reason that I had given him so many openings because he would like to tell me he was not interested because he would go back and forth of texting me nonstop to like just not really talking to me, whatever. So I really wanted to be on the same page. I tried to communicate. So the fact I am the most blatant, blunt, communicative person I know. So the fact that you made a video saying, all you're gonna do is communicate with me, guys. No, <laughs> no, apparently not because I tried so many fucking times, dude. So hi, I miss you, how are you, blah, blah, blah. Just clearing my head. I said, oh yeah, how did that go? He said, pretty decent, just let my place get super nasty while I was filming and editing. I said, did you actually get the chance to clear your head as well? He said, well, not entirely yet. It's cluttered, but eh. And I said, want to talk about anything? This is the beginning of the end. He says, well, actually, yes. But I want to say first off that it won't change anything or affect anything with us. And it's just that I'm in somewhat of an open relationship with someone now as a couple of days ago. She knows you're coming and she knows you're staying with me and everything. I told her I don't know what your and I's relationship will turn out to be because there's an attraction on my end towards you, but she's really cool with anything. So just wanted to be upfront with you about it. Not that I think it's a huge deal or anything. I just want to make sure. First of all, how are you going to tell me that this doesn't change anything between us? That you're fucking someone else, but oh, it's fine. You can, I can still come and fuck you too. <laughs> Why is it yours to decide this doesn't change anything? Wow. So right off the bat, I'm too accepting and understanding of a person in this text in retrospect. I said, hmm. Not entirely sure what to think here. Obviously, you're free to do anything that makes you happy, and that's really all I ultimately want for you. I just also want to be a friend, say I'm not particularly interested in an open relationship in any capacity. I have nothing against it, just isn't for me. So I'm not entirely sure where your head is at, but thanks for letting me know. I still am obviously an interest. I still am obviously at interest. I am still obviously interested in you. I guess I just need a little clarification on what you mean with this situation entirely. I said, like, obviously we haven't met yet, so it's hard to word this correctly. Ah. And he goes, yeah, no, that's fair. I don't imagine you'd be interested in that either. I've never really been in one before. It's just that she's interested in other ladies, and I'm interested in other ladies too, so we aren't really, like, defining it. We have personal boundaries and stuff we've talked about, but ultimately what I want with you is a close friend and someone who would potentially like to hug and snuggle me. You're 30, my guy. That sounds amazing, haha. -ha. Anything beyond that is just extra or something to communicate if it ever becomes something more. But again, I know it won't affect us at least being close. Again, deciding for me. <laughs> and again, what? Girl, what? A friend, a close friend who wants to hold and snuggle you, what? I'm 23, I left that shit back in middle school, my guy. <laughs> I don't know what the hell you're talking about said, I do have to be honest, this changes things from my perspective personally. Obviously, I would still love to be close to you as well, but I think I just draw clearer lines between friendship and otherwise, I guess. Which is totally fine, just knowing you're in a relationship is obviously gonna have me coming at this completely differently. Duh. <laughs> which is not the answer he was hoping for. I think what he was hoping for me to say was, okay, I'm an idiot, I'll come and have sex with you and, and your girlfriend and be used in every way that you want. Bro, we even had the conversation about Greg Onision trying to fly me out. You're like mini me Greg, if maybe not maybe not even mini me, you are worse than Onision, my friend, my former friend. <laughs> what the fuck? He says, I see, I see, and I will respect that as well. You just have to let me know what boundaries you have, and I will do my best to make you comfortable. Again, 
this is, I, I've heard other commentary channels say this. It shouldn't be on the women in your lives' responsibility to have to constantly communicate what is and isn't crossing a line, what is and isn't manipulative, what is and isn't cheating. You should be able to have enough of a moral compass to decide this for yourself. And if you don't, therapy. There's a reason it exists. So I finally started getting mad. I said, I'm really trying to put this nicely without also being a pushover. I obviously didn't expect you to wait around for me months ago, but this is why I made sure to communicate what page we were on before I actually bought the ticket. I really thought we were interested in seeing where this was going, and I thought you'd give me the courtesy of waiting till I got there to see what this was. I mean, I only bought the ticket like two weeks ago. If this was going on before then, you should have told me that. If not, then I guess I'm just disappointed? I felt this was maybe a little more than that, so I was declining other options. He says, it wasn't going on before that, no, meaning the relationship. Oh, and another thing I'd like to point out about this exchange is nowhere does he say that the girl he's in a relationship with is the girl he's been trying to, like, sneak in conversations about having threesomes with. I know who this girl is. Why didn't she just tell me it was her, Destry? Are you trying to hide something? Yeah, obviously. I don't need an answer for that. So he says, it wasn't going on before then, no. I guess in my eyes, I just wasn't a deciding factor of you not wanting to try other people out. I just had absolutely no expectation of what would happen, and even if we decided we liked each other, I had no idea what that meant also. But your point is fair, and I'm sorry I disappointed you. I just hope you still want to see me. I said, I understand that. I just honestly need some time to think about what I want to do, but I'll let you know shortly, okay? He says, take all the time you need, frowny face. He messages me every day two days that i ignore him because i'm literally like panicking at this point i'm like i don't know i have this plane ticket to go see him is he gonna show up at the airport with this other girl like what is this like i don't i, I went out with my friends i discussed this with my family really everyone in my life was like don't go you idiot don't go and finally at this point i decide against the wishes of my friends and family, that I'm going to go, but cut all emotional ties and just work on the song at this point. So I finally respond to him. He says, hello, thinking about you. So the next day I respond, I say, hi, how are you? We have some small talk, and I say, I just wanted to let you know that I sent you a Valentine's Day gift a few days ago. Um, I got it before our conversation the other day and feel kind of weird now. I still hope you like it. So I figured I'd give you a heads up so it's not a surprise or weird anymore. He says, oh, no worries. It's okay. I'm sure I'll love it. And I said, I wouldn't have sent it had I known. And he completely, <laughs> I don't even want to read this verbatim because it's just so stupid. He can't even tell that I'm trying to be a bitch. Either that or he's purposely ignoring the fact that I'm purposely trying to be a bitch because you deserve it. And he says, oh, don't worry, don't worry. Like, I'm still going to love your gift. And I said, I'm not dot, 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 worried. Just still taken aback. Not sure what to think. He said, I mean, I don't see personally on how things change now. <laughs> God, I don't even have, like, words. I said, I'm just not quite sure how we're seeing where things go if you're already in a relationship. The be close friends thing and cuddle throws me as well. I don't cuddle with my close friends, lol. I'm happy to come just visit a friend's, but your intentions are incredibly confusing. He says, I see. Well, like I said, we don't have to do anything you're uncomfy with. Bottom line is I just wanted to show you a, a good time as friends or otherwise. Even still, you're not being clear, my friend. Like, I'm saying my friend in a nasty way. You're not my friend. I'm saying that because I'm trying not to call you a C-U-N-T. So I say, okay, well, I really just don't generally travel across the country for platonic relationships. I'm sorry if somehow things were miscommunicated, but I was genuinely interested in interested in you romantically lol i'm still down to come and work on music because i like this song but i'd be lying if i said i wasn't bummed or caught off guard he said i gotcha i saw this time meeting as friendship anyways because i didn't want to jump into anything but there's still an interest in me for you as i said it's just a cautious one and i said okay that's okay i completely understand not wanting to jump into anything for the sake of being cautious but it seems like you've jumped into something else before i even had the chance to get there it seems like i should be the one being cautious now and this is where this uwu behavior bullshit pisses me off. You should be cautious of what, frowny face? 
this point I was pissed. I was like, I don't really know how to explain this anymore. We've been flirting for months. I've clearly expressed my interest like numerous times. You've been talking about looking for someone who won't play your emotions. I say I want to be that person down the line. We mutually book a plane ticket for us to meet and I feel like you played my emotions. So yeah, I, I'm getting angry at this point. Okay, so this part is really long, but we are in the home stretch. There's only a few more. There's like four more screenshots after this one. So just bear with me, guys. Bear with me. We're getting into the nitty gritty. He says, I just saw things differently, and I guess I wasn't meaning to be hurtful or anything. I know we've been flirting, and I love that. We've also just been talking about how I'm not ready for the settling down lifestyle and certainly not long distance, which is actually not true. The last time we talked about long distance, he literally said long distance is perfect for him so he can have space and work on his project. So you're literally just lying or you're dumb or you don't remember a conversation you had with one girl. I went into this trip as two people who admire each other a lot in a lot of ways and wanted to meet and explore that admiration, but I truthfully didn't think anything like sexual would happen or anything of that sort, because I just wanted to give us a chance to meet and experience a friendship first before anything else was talked about, which is why I sort of avoided a, t a lot of talk about that subject. Which to me, I feel like, obviously, I wasn't trying to like send you nudes or talk sexually either because we haven't met. But I still have respect for people when I'm talking to them. And I, I don't quite understand what he's saying here. Like he's saying I want to invest my emotions into you while having sex with other women. Is essentially what I'm picking up, what he's throwing down here. And <laughs> no, sorry bruh. And I also wonder, I also wonder in reading this if the girl he's dating knows of any of this. Which she does now, so hey, what's up? I really hope you weren't involved in trying to get me to have a threesome because if so, you're also equally as disgusting and you're dating a child broomer. <laughs> okay. So I said, I wasn't looking to come out of this trip as anything official, much less settled down, lol. I've just done that. I'm also looking to go slow and just meet and feel it out. There's a place between friends and being together, and I figured that was the in-between place we were headed. I just assumed when you said you weren't ready to jump into anything, that didn't mean specifically with me. If that was the case, you should have said so and shouldn't have continued to flirt with me and then and then offer to have me come out and stay with you, and then drop the bomb that you're in an undefined sexual relationship with someone else a few days prior to me coming. If this were months ago, or even weeks ago, I'd be so stoked for you. I'm not even really upset, just frustrated it was gone about in this way. Especially if this is just an open relationship you're in, you couldn't have waited 10 days to decide I wasn't worth it. I don't know. I just gave you multiple conversations where I set it up for you to say these things before and you never did. You assured me we were on the same page. You at least can't say that's not true. You know, I'm sorry about my friends, because my friends were blowing them up. They all just think I'm being way too nice and they're pretty upset on my behalf since they don't think I'm upset enough. I just think it is what it is at this point, though. And this, my guy, flirting and leading you on are two very different things, and I feel like I've been pretty good at not doing the latter. What's the difference? What is the difference? If you feel differently, I'd love to talk about it and figure out exactly where we stand and what could be different. I tried that many times, Destry. But one thing I hope to do is have you come here without any expectations at all. And I feel like you, meaning me, were the one expecting things to happen. So like you're literally gaslighting me now, okay? I only expected to show you a fun time and to be friends with each other. I felt like even if it, we did like each other, nothing more would have come of it because I refused to think even for a second that I wanted you to come here for anything sexual. That was not my intention and I think you know that. Do I though? Considering the multiple conversations about threesomes, do I though? So the rest of the conversation was not that important. Essentially, I end up saying, you know what, I was interested in you, I'm not anymore, I'm coming to work on this song, whatever, have a nice day, bruh, I'm gonna go do some stuff with my friends. And then, the timing of the universe could not have been any more perfect. I was scrolling through Twitter, the next day after we have this conversation, literally the next day I am on Twitter scrolling, just chilling, and I see a hashtag about Destry Smith. And so I was like, okay. At first I literally thought I was dreaming because I was having so much turmoil about my situation with him, just my personal situation with him. I didn't even realize there, you know, there was cheating involved yet. I realized obviously there was some manipulation and lies. But I had no clue about the brooming and the SA accusations and the children involved. And when I was scrolling through Twitter that day, that's when all of that 
was put on blast. And like I said, the universe could not have timed that any better. And I know it's not the universe, it's actually the victims. And I want to say here in my own words to the victims, thank you for speaking out when you did because had you waited a few more days, I would have gone and I probably would still be enmeshed with Destry and that whole situation. And if it's any consolation, you saved me so much heartache and pain and I can't thank you enough for that. And I wish you only healing and happiness from here on out. But thank you so much. Um, so the, these accusations come out online and like I said, I literally thought I was dreaming when I first saw them because I was so enmeshed in my own issues with him. I was like, there's no way, like there's no way. I was like, is my subconscious leaking onto Twitter? Like, but no, he really was being canceled. So I scroll through the, the hashtag. Obviously there's all these accusations that aren't my story to tell. There's so many videos on TikTok, on YouTube. There's so many Twitter posts from young girls or girls who were incredibly young when they had inappropriate experiences with Destry. Even stories about him having a rope ladder out of the room that he lived in so he could sneak young girls in and out of his window without his roommates having to see. Like, just just the unimaginable bullshit that I saw in this thread was like, okay, well, my mind has been made up for me. Obviously, I'm not going. And I was just gonna ignore him. I was just gonna be like, whatever, fuck it, the day comes, I'm just not gonna get on the plane, I'm just not gonna go. But he couldn't just leave me alone, could he? He reached out. He reached out when this is blowing up on Twitter and he says, hi, I just wanted to say like, with everything going on, I value you and your friendship a lot. So you're trying to get ahead of it, is what you're saying. You're trying to get me on your side before this really blows up, is what you're saying. You're not saying you actually value me. Because if you did value me or my friendship, you would have just treated me with decency and human respect, like you give... Well, I guess to no one. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you know where I was trying to go with that. And um, I'll post the next two three screenshots, but essentially that is the end of us talking and I never spoke to him again. And I was going to leave my statement as what it was on Twitter until the disaster of an apology video was posted by him. The reason I really ultimately call the, the apology video a disaster is because nowhere once does he actually apologize. In fact, he doesn't even call it an apology video. It's just his thoughts on the situation, which aren't really worth a damn anymore, Des, in case you didn't realize. Um, and B, because the accusations that all of us on the internet and all of us in his life want addressed is the ones about kids, the ones about underage girls that there seems to be heaps of proof online about. He just completely danced around that and pretty much just you know, acknowledge the fact that he used to treat adult women poorly. So here I am at the end of this video <laughs> with proof that as recent as four weeks ago, you were treating adult women horribly. You were cheating on your current girlfriend with me. You were cheating on your girlfriend before that with me. There's probably a lot more girls out there that you were cheating on all of us with. You wasted my time, you wasted my money, you led me on, you put me in a horrible position, you disgust me. I have nothing else to say. I'm just disgusted and I am so frustrated that in my half day off, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm sitting down to do. And it has to be done because otherwise Destry is going to keep dancing around the important accusations. Now there's no way for him to dance around the accusations of treating adult women horrible. It's proven. If you think otherwise, then you're probably a dude who treats women poorly as well. Sorry. Destry, you cannot deny any longer that as recent as four weeks ago, you were lying, cheating, and manipulating women. And that's just the ones we know about. <laughs> I've laid it on the table. You guys can make your own decisions, you guys watching this video. Personally, if I were you, I would do everything in my power to unsubscribe, to walk away, to remove that energy of someone as horrible and manipulative and frankly evil from your life. And now that all of this is out there, you can no longer 
dance around the accusations about underage girls. I am posing you the question or the demand right now to address this. And if you don't, well, whether if you do or you don't, you have no space on this platform. Your only course of actions, the only correct course of actions for you, the only justice that you can bring to all these girls is to either A, make a video actually apologizing and step down from YouTube forever, or B, turn yourself into the police. That's your ultimatum. And with that, I'm gonna leave you guys, because like I said, I have to go to work in half an hour and I need to calm down. So Destry, if you're watching this, go fuck yourself.